So at the end, probably tomorrow, uh, we are going to send everyone a copy of the PDF of this workshop. So you have the links and the interesting information that we are sharing with you today, as well as we will post the recording of this webinar so you can come back to it if you want to and rewatch it again. Also, we are relaunching the same series of workshops with additional of a couple of ones as well in the month of May. So we have a link to all those virtual workshops for you as well. So just wanted to let you know. So okay. thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Olga St. Pierre, and I am a local real estate agent here in our community. And uh, what I, I thought that this was a very appropriate topic, especially now that it's springtime. So this is what I'm going to be sharing with you today. So just a little bit about me. I have been in the industry, in the real estate industry for over 11 years. I have a team of special, uh, specialty uh, partners that work with me depending on what is needed. And our goal is to be helpful in the community to help you be sustainable and responsible homeowners, as well as uh, help people buy, move, and um, you know, sell real estate. We do have extensive uh, moving program pretty much anywhere in the United States and Canada if you need to move or you have friends, or relatives, and coworkers. And also please consider us as your concierge services. Uh, we are almost like your virtual yellow pages where if you need organizers, if you need to know where to haul stuff away, you need contractors, you need recommendations for attorneys, financial advisors, accountants, we are here to help you. We have an extensive database that we are collecting and always looking for good people to add to it as well. If you know of anybody who has been really good um, in helping you and your family. So let's get started and talk about why are we talking about decluttering. I had a lot of fun researching statistics when I was decided, designing this workshop last year that I want to share with you. Did you know and I want you to think about this and look around you after we're done, that 80% of what we own, we actually rarely use, mm -hmm. right? Do you agree with that? Yep. I think it's pretty accurate. People spend yep. an average of 55 minutes a day looking for stuff. I think that's pretty accurate too. That's two week vacation every year. And also there are companies out there who now make money on this. You know, one of those little squares, I think it's called, where you can put it on the back of your cell phone or on your keys or on your TV remotes. And if you can't find it in your house and you push the button, it's going to buzz and let you know where it's located in your home. So there are some smart people out there now that are monetizing this. Also, to me, this is huge. Decluttering can reduce your housework by up to 40%. Who's up for that? I totally mm -hmm. was excited. So what we're going to talk about today is why are we talking about decluttering? Because it's not just fun and games. It's really actually important based on some of the studies that I read. Room by room suggestions for you. We're going to put a plan together that is manageable and doable and realistic. And my goal is to bring it down to you more from, you know, what you see on social media and how, for example, Marie Kondo does it to what I think is more manageable for us normal humans that you know work and sleep and eat every day and we'll talk about keeping and selling and throwing and donating i'll give you some good ideas as well so that's the game plan for today also at the end if you have any other questions that i haven't covered uh, please let me know we'll open up at the end for the q a sessions or in the middle if there's anything that you want to get clarification on you are welcome to unmute yourself and be able to do that as well so why are we talking about decluttering in general, okay? This is what I hear from my clients all the time. Well, I don't know where to start. It grows like mold over time if it's left alone. And, right, you agree with me, we all have stuff. I actually think that it is the mission of my family, my husband and both of my daughters, to keep me busy and to declutter their stuff that they bring in every day, okay? With time, if we don't keep up with it, it becomes too much and it becomes painful and we don't know where to start. We don't know what to keep, right? For how long, what if we're going to need this? 
And especially with paperwork, we don't know how long we're going to keep it for. So I have some guidelines for you too that I hope you're going to find helpful. So talking about decluttering in general, okay? What I want you to think about is that things in our lives affect us on two different levels. The first level is subconscious and the second level is conscious. And subconscious is the things that we almost do on autopilot. Right? You get up in the morning and you, you know, go to the bathroom and you have your morning routine and then maybe you go get your cup of coffee started, you grab a newspaper. A lot of the th those things you don't think about because you do it all the time. However, if you realize that you're starting to run out of milk for your coffee, then you're like, you stop yourself and then you say, I need to put that on my list for my groceries. Right? That is a conscious decision because you realize that something was out of your routine. So a lot of the times... The clutter actually affects us on a subconscious level. And what happens is it just sits there and, and kind of grinds their way in into a never ending loop in the back of our minds. And that's why it is so, it actually can be a cause of stress, which we don't even realize because we kind of get used to it and then we just kind of get attuned to it. So overall, clutter can be, become, can be a source of stress, depression health issues, right, where people have no sense of focus, it's disruption of sleep, family problems, and home disrepair. I've seen, you know, uh, some confrontations between, you know, loved ones and husband and wife when they are make, trying to make a move and we're getting ready for them to do that. And the husband is like, I am ready. I have all my things. I'm going to get rid of things. And then the wife is the opposite. And she's like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not ready to get rid of all these things. I may need them or my you know, my kids may need them. So this is where it can become a source of tension. And home disrepair, if you keep a lot of papers and things get, if, uh, you know, some corners of your home get covered up by boxes, critters love paper and boxes. It's nice and warm and cozy for them. And then they start eating through things. So you may not realize that you may actually have some structural or potential home repairs to do because those things have been covered by layers and layers of paper. So as clutter accumulates, your energy stagnates, right? Do you ever feel swampy when you come into the room where you have been keeping all those papers and you're like, Ugh, right? You actually, your mood sours. And that's what we're talking about is you, you get energy that is negative because you're thinking about things that are not pleasant to you. So what we're focusing on today is releasing the things that we don't love to make room for new passions and interests. And that really is the goal and how I want you to think about the reason why we're going to declutter. Okay? And the fact that all of you are here means that you are ready for change and there are some things that are bothering you, you know, whether it's in your home or you know, in some other passion. So we're going to build a game plan today. You are the girl with a red cap on. Okay, so a couple of things that I want you to think about. Uh, number one, you need to decide on how much time you're going to spend to decluttering your first time. Okay, it's actually very helpful for you to get a timer. I have, I do have my timer here actually. This is mine. Okay, this is a regular kitchen timer and this is what I use for my own decluttering plans and when I need to get projects done. Okay, so for the first time, a lot of the experts recommend you do an hour. I don't want you to be uncomfortable with that number. If you want to do it for a shorter period of time, then do 30 minutes, then do 45 minutes, right? Just set enough time to actually get a certain things accomplished, okay? Then you need to make sure that you get no distractions. I'm going to cover all of your excuses today too, okay? <laughs> so you need to put your phone on silent. You can't have this buzzing and going berserk while you are going to be decluttering, right? You can't look at your notifications from your Facebook, your text messages, because those are the biggest distractors. Because you, once you start looking at your phone, you're going to realize that, you know, God forbid, if you don't check those messages or see what's happening on Instagram, it's going to be the end of the world. So please do not use phone as your timer. You actually need to use something else. Good timers are a little kitchen timer like this, or you can also use your microwave timer or your stove timer, like that's what you use for, for baking. Put that on for the amount of time and then focus on your tasks. Think of that one hour that you decided to set for your first decluttering session as your appointment with yourself. 
it is very important that you're telling yourself that you're going to honor that, right? Because you would not cancel an appointment if you had to go to see a doctor, right? You're not gonna say, well, I kind of don't feel like going. So I want you to think about the appointment for your decluttering the same way. Then you definitely need to change in your comfortable clothing. I can assure you decluttering, carrying boxes, moving stuff around, up and down the stairs, you go into work some sweat. So the good news is, think of it this way, when you declutter, you actually exercise. You're going to be burning calories, so you need to wear comfortable clothing, something like yoga pants or leggings or something that is not gonna pinch you. Next, you absolutely have to eat and you have to bring a bottle of water because one of the excuses are you're gonna to start to get thirsty, you're not gonna have anything nearby, you're gonna head over to the kitchen and you're gonna get distracted. Or you're gonna work up an appetite and say, you know what, I'm gonna take a break and eat. I can assure you, you're not gonna come back to your session. So make sure that you grab a bite to eat and you have a bottle of water with you during your decluttering session. Next, put on some music, light a candle, open a window, whatever makes you happy to help you get you into that mood. You know, if you have a playlist on Spotify that makes you happy, and get you all you know, energetic and excited, put that on because that will help you get through your one hour appointment. Also, I suggest that you grab a notebook for your decluttering plan and set that aside strictly for you for those plans. And I'm going to ask you some questions at the end that I want you to think about. And what you're going to do is also write out down some notes and reminders and then make your plans for the next session. All right, here's your plan, here's your tools, here's what you need to prepare. You need to have a trash can and recycle can. Then you need to have storage bins. It's always good to have storage bins that are see-through, and those are the bins that you're actually using for storing your things at home. They should be sturdy, and they should have lids. And see-through is just helpful for you to be, to be able to see what's in them. Then you, I encourage you to use post-it notes or something sticky in different colors for labeling, as well as boxes. Some suggestions that you can see on the photo, you can have them different colors or you can use regular boxes. And here's a couple of suggestions for you. First category items you're going to keep, donate, undecided, throw away and sell. Now, the goal of your first session is not to put everything in the undecided box, okay? This is not the goal. The goal is to be able to fill a little bit each box, okay? Because that's what you do when you're making progress on the stuff that you have. A couple of things to keep in mind. Number one, items that bring you joy, make you smile, that support your vision for where you're going with this decluttering plan, you want to keep. Okay, you're going to release the things that are part of your past that you want to shed that make you feel sad, guilty, and unhappy. We're going to talk a little bit more about some of the things that I think a lot of us hold on to that are truly special, maybe family mementos or you know, something that got passed down to us. I think we tend to hold on to those things because we feel guilty. What would our parents think or what would our grandparents think that if we got rid of them? So we'll talk about that in a second. And I want you to actually make notes in your notebook about how you're feeling what you're doing, right? If certain things really make you upset, write them down. Because journaling has been proven very helpful to help you work through some of your concerns and maybe what's on your mind, okay? Any kind of excuses, any kind of resistance, anything that you want to write down, go ahead and do that, right? Use that as your kind of mental uh, windshield wipers. Just write everything that's on your mind. And then you need to stay focused for that one hour that you picked and actually get through what you decided that you were going to get through. After that one hour is up, guess what? You are done. I want you to pat yourself on the back and say, yay, I did this. And then you're gonna grab your notebook again and you're going to make notes. Where did you stop? How much did you get accomplished? Okay, if let's say you put things aside that you are not sure of maybe it's something that your kids have that you want to give to them write down a note to contact your kids let them know what you have take some pictures maybe text them copies of those items that you want to share with them and your family also it's important for you once you wrap up i want you to think about 
planning the next session? When is that going to happen? A lot of my clients felt that Saturday mornings is a good idea and a good time to do it because people ask me, when, when do you think I should plan it? I always suggest to you, you do this first thing in the morning, whatever your day off is. And the reason being is because you haven't been boggled down with running around and errands and doing things for your family and cooking and so forth. If you do one hour after breakfast, before your day starts, you're going to have a burst of energy for the rest of your day, knowing that you got something accomplished that was on your plan personally. All right, let's talk about different rooms. Also, if you're thinking about it, you're not sure where to start, which room I should start, my recommendation to you is think about which room in your home is your favorite, okay? Whether it's your den or your bedroom, but where, which room do you run to when you get so tired and you just need a break from everyone, okay? And if you start in that room and you make a progress week after week, it's going to make you feel so much more energized and excited because that is the room that you chose to focus on first. So just a suggestion for you. So let's run through each room of your home and I have some suggestions here for you. So let's talk about kitchen. Number one rule, please do not think that you're gonna get the whole kitchen done in that one hour that you set for yourself. It's going to take some time, right? We have lots of cupboards, we have lots of drawers, we have lots of stuff. So just do one or two drawers at a time, focus on that, right? And then you can move on. Okay, just having one messy draw being done will give you a look of satisfaction and help you get to the next project. Fridge, do not forget your refrigerator. Now is actually a good time for us, for you, for us to get th go through your fridge. Okay? You need to throw away all of expired food. Here's some suggestions for you. Put your dairy on the top shelf towards the back because it's cooler. Leftovers stay in the middle shelf in a clear container because it's going to be eye level and you want to market maybe for you, for others in your family and say, eat me now. Because how many of us forget that we have the leftovers because they kind of get pushed to the back of the fridge and then we end up throwing them away. So let's not waste that. Fruits and veggies need to be in separate drawers because they need separate uh, cooling. You know how you have those little switches up and down depending on its vegetables or fruit? Definitely pay attention to those in your refrigerator. Meat should be at the bottom and it should be in its own dedicated drawer just in case maybe it leaks. Drink and condiments on the doors for sure. And also label where the items should go, right? That way you know when the things are running real. Uh, low. Like if your ketchup is always here, you can see when you're starting to run low on it, then you can add the ketchup onto your shopping list for next time you head over to the grocery store. Also, by you making sure your fridge is organized, you're going to waste less food, which means that you're going to be able to save money. Use clear glass storage containers so that way you know what's in them. Uh, I have a food storage guide that I recently found that was very helpful and I'm happy to mail it to you or email it to you. Just let me know. Just remember, be just because the food does not have an expiration date like milk or eggs does not mean that it's going to last forever, right? So this is something we put in our bodies. We don't want to keep it for six months or longer. So I refer to that food guide frequently that's on my fridge to make sure that, you know, things that are in my refrigerator are always fresh. Next, I want you to think about, let's talk about the stuff that's in your cupboards, okay? How many cups and how many serving utensils do you really need, right? You don't need 30 of them if you have four people living in your household. I do use a couple cups depending on what I'm drinking. So go through them and decide what you want. The other thing that I'm encouraging you to check for is things that are chipped and cracked, okay? Once you're uh, cupware started to chip, it's going to continue chipping and I don't want you to eat those pieces. So you need to look through all of your plates and bowls and cups and if they're chipped, they need to be tossed because chip can also create cracks and cra cracks can get, you know, hairline and then you're going to get small chips and again, you're going to eat them and you don't want that. Also, how many items do you use once a year or less? What am I talking about here? is your favorite Christmas platter, your favorite Thanksgiving platter, you know, things that you use once a year, maybe it's your special Easter item, things like that. 
And what I'm going to ask you today is to think about and see, number one, they take a lot of room. I can't tell you how many times people would take me in the basement or in their shelving that's along the stairs to go downstairs or in their closet and say, oh, well, this is my popcorn maker or this is my you know, ice cream maker that I use once a year for our celebration. I want you to think about the things that you have to use on the rare, rare occasion and decide, do you really need them? Okay. I'm not asking you to get rid of them, all of them, but I am asking you to go through them and to see, are there some items that you haven't used in a few years that you thought you would, right? Because those things do take a lot of space. Then I also want you to think about your special items. Okay. Now I actually want to share your personal story with you. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen for just a second and I will show you my, my personal thing. So can you see the plate? Yeah. All right. So I bought this a set of plates from Pier One probably two years ago, right before Christmas. And they were on, clear, on clearance because they are very pretty fall leaves, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, do did, did you think I needed more plates? No, I did not. But you know what? Sometimes when you so see something in the store and your eye just gets drawn to it and you say, oh my God, they're so beautiful, right? These plates bring me joy, okay? So what did I end up doing? I got the plates. I'm like, oh, well, these are so pretty. It's fall or we're heading into the winter holidays. And I said to myself, this is very nice. And guess what I did? I actually put them away in my china cabinet. And then when I was working on this workshop, probably in the winter time of, of the year afterwards, I thought about this and I said, you know what? Why am I keeping these plates away? Just because they have fall leaves on them does not mean I can't use them year round. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Now my whole family eats out of the fall leaves plates every day. And every time I make breakfast, lunch, and dinner and I use my plates, I actually smile. Mm -hmm. So what I want you to do is thinking about what do you have stored away that you really, really love, whether it's your special china, whether it's your special plates, or if you have special glasses for wine, nowadays people drink wine. I want you to pull those things out and I want you to start using them. Who are you saving them for? All they're doing is they're collecting dust in your china cupboards and in your special places. So take them out and start using them. That way it will bring you so much more joy and energy because they are your favorite things and you get to use them. So that's mm -hmm. your homework. One of the things that I want you, really want you to think about today is what are some of your special things that you have tucked away that you can pull out and enjoy? And hopefully when I touch base with you after this workshop, you're going, you will be able to share with me some of those things because I would love to hear them. So that's my personal story that I'm sharing with you. All right, let's go back to the kitchen. So here are some suggestions for you because people were always asking me, what can I do? How can I organ be organized better? I have some suggestions for you that you can use right and, you know, type in those uh, numbers right on Amazon and you can order some of those things that I have found useful and some of my other clients have shared with me on how to be a better organizer in your kitchen so that way you don't have to keep a lot of stuff, but you only keep the things that are absolutely useful and helpful to you. So these are some suggestions for you that you are welcome to use and, and um, take it for your home. And also, if you guys have some, some other suggestions that you have found, please share them with me as well. I'm always looking for some good ideas. All right, so this is kitchen. Let's head over to the bathrooms, okay? Bathrooms are important. Number one, you have to throw away and go through of the products that you don't use or like, that you haven't used in the last, I'm going to say eight to 12 months. And what I can tell you is that it's very, very tempting to have pretty containers and beautiful packaged items and creams displayed in your bathroom. And I get it. 
I've been sucker to buying things before too, because marketers spend thousands of dollars on a monthly basis, on a yearly basis, it's actually millions of dollars to make us buy things that look pretty, okay? What I also want you to think about is that the biggest organ in our body is our skin. So what you put on your skin then gets absorbed into our bodies. And we wanna make sure that our body, which is the only home we have, this is what I want you to take away today as well, is that you know, if you want to downsize from your home, if you want to buy a vacation home, you wanna do something else, I can help you with that, right? That's real estate, buying and selling. But the only home that we get when we we're born is the only home we get to keep for the rest of our lives and we have to take care of it. So think about before you're putting a lotion on that is 12 months old, just because it's pretty, you are putting chemicals into your body that gets absorbed in from your skin. So throw it away, buy a fresh one. If you still like that brand and you like packaging, just don't use anything old, old stuff. For old medicine, definitely check out the expiration dates and then it's not recommended that you throw away the medicine or even that you recycle it. The best way I found to dispose of it is to drop it off to your police department. They collect them. And I also heard you may be able to take some old medicine to pharmacies like Walgreens to CVS. So check with your local one that you use. Then what I want you to do is set up and think about your morning and evening routine. What do you use on a regular basis every morning? And then what do you use every, every evening? And then you can use a clear container and set up your station, your morning station, your evening station. So that way your items are combined and easy to reach for. All right. Makeup. You need to go through your makeup and see how old things are because you have to rotate your makeup frequently. Here's some general rules of thumb for you. Mascara is six months. You know, most of the other things that are three months and then lipsticks, uh, lip gloss, foundation are, you know, usually will last you about a year. If you use that on a regular basis, then you will be buying it probably every, you know, four to six months or so. And also don't forget to clean your brushes, right? You need to clean them because otherwise they will stick, they, they look nice when they're in your container, but they do get dusty. And uh, you know the, the chemicals in the makeup that's on them gets old, so you definitely want to clean them out because you are touching them to your face. Forty-five percent of American women spend more than two hundred dollars a year on makeup. Does that make sense to you? However, if you go through your makeup on a regular basis, it's also going to help you save money. People know exactly everything that you own and that you have. Okay. What I also think is a good idea, and this is kind of the rule of thumb that I adopted for myself. If you are going to be you know, replenishing your makeup, let's say every six months is what we're talking about, a good time to buy makeup is Christmas time, right? Because everything is on sale and then maybe right after Christmas when there's some semi-annual sales. And then the next one is going to be 4th of July. So you celebrate the holidays and then you say, celebrate 4th of July and you get yourself some fresh makeup. Here are some cool, suggestions on storage ideas for your bathrooms if you're tight on space definitely use clear containers right and you can pick do like stackable things uh like you know stackable food storage bins you can use them to keep all of your lotions and things under the uh, vanity as well so some things that you can look at all right let's head into bedrooms bedroom is your peaceful place Maybe it's your favorite room in the home, okay? It is very important to make sure that it's de as decluttered as possible because clutter will affect how you rest, how you distress, right? And how you get ready for the next day, okay? So we're starting with clothes, ladies, okay? Average US woman keeps about $500 worth of unworn clothes in her closet. Do you agree with that? I want you to think about your own closets and apply the 80% rule. Probably 80% of the stuff that you have hanging in your closet, you haven't worn in a while. I want you to think about that. So here's a couple things to think about. We're going to go through our closets and we're going to go through some of those things. My recommendation to you is if you haven't been in your closet in a while and you're not sure exactly what's in it, you need to take everything out and lay it out on your bed and sort it, okay? 
The online expert said six months. If you haven't worn it for six months, you're going to need to donate it. This is where I am going to give you a break because I thought even for me, and I have no problems decluttering, six months was a little bit tough, right? It's not even half a year. It's only really maybe one or two seasons. So two years. This is, the, I think, is a more reasonable rule of thumb. If you haven't worn something that is in your closet in two years, you're going to donate it. If it's something that's out of style, you need to donate it. Things that are stained, torn, and they're in bad shape, we're going to donate as well. So for those things, what I want you to think about is keep a couple because if you're working in the yard or you're doing some painting or you are you know, working in your house, definitely keep some things that you know, you know, it's okay if they get dirty or if they get stained again. Also, if you have some old sheets, uh, old towels, those are great to donate to animal shelters. So don't think that those things have to be thrown away. Animal shelters will always take those things because they are going to need them for the animals. So keep that in mind. Clothes that you don't like or you don't need that is too small and too large, please donate as well. Don't wait until you are telling yourself, well, I'm just gonna lose a little bit of weight and then I'm gonna fit into that suit. Because by that time, perhaps the item that you're thinking to try to get back into may be out of style. And you know what, ladies and gentlemen, is that the things that I have purchased for myself maybe five years ago may not be the same style that I like now. I think our tastes change with time. So give yourself some grace to buy some fresh pieces once you go through your closet and you purge it, okay? Then you also need to organize your closet so that way you know what's in it. So there are some suggestions for you to use some cubes. You can also use some clear zip up bags. I like them for storing like blankets and things because and I can see what's in them. And also use the space in your closets. I see it all the time when I'm showing houses where you have stuff hanging on top but then you have empty space on the bottom. You can have two racks created where you can hang shorter items, right? You can hang your jackets and your blouses on top and then you can hang your pants on the bottom so that way you utilize all of the wall space that you have in your closet. All right, heading into living room and family rooms, okay? When you are in those rooms, I want you to think about all the books that you have in the magazines, okay? Anything that is paper is a huge attractor of dust, right? So if you have been sneezing, uh, quite often in your home. I, when I was doing some research again for the same uh, webinar, I realized that a lot of the times people don't realize that they may become allergic to dust, right? To what we have in our home. So think about if you haven't touched some of your bookshelves in a while and some of your piles of paper in a while and you are not feeling great, maybe you can't breathe, you need to go through those things, you need to get rid of them, weed them out, vacuum them out because it might be dust that is making you uncomfortable. Any unwanted, outdated books, you can donate them to the library, okay? If the books are not in good shape, they can be recycled. You need to go through your electronics and cords, okay? You can donate and recycle them or throw them away. And uh, I actually like to, to tie my cords. This is one of my cords that I'm using now, and I actually have it tied so that way it's not a mess. You can use rubber bands or you can use some other ways, okay? Like this is a little like Velcro that I have on it so that way it's all in order. Look at your pillows and blankets. If you have uh, furry friends and children, they love to sit on blankets and pillows and they do get uh, tired and need to be retired. So go through yours and then, you know, buy a couple of new ones if your old ones are really, really bad. Next, I'm going to encourage you to go through your photos and see maybe it's time to print them, update them. I think we are now a society that loves to take pictures on our phone, but we never actually print them. And what is more joyful than to look at the photos of your loved ones or your friends or somewhere that you've been and have that as a great memory so that way every time you walk by, it's actually going to bring you joy. If you head over to CVS or Walgreens, they have very inexpensive services. You can pick the photo yourself and you can print it on the spot and put it in the frame. 
So that's another part of your homework to see if this is something that you want to tackle and you have some photos that you may want to get printed or already framed, okay? If those rooms are your space where you unwind after coming home from work, it has to be uncluttered just like your bedroom because this is where you go to de-stress and relax. Some ideas for you that I, um, that I have for dressing up your space, right? If you wanted to create a collage of your photos, if you don't wanna just have them on the shelves, you can hang them on the wall. You can do them all the same, or you can do collage of different photos and you can buy that collage in different colors right on Amazon. That way it takes kind of takes the guesswork or how you get them all situated and coordinate on your wall. You don't even have to think about it. Here's some good ideas for you. All right, your home office. Again, this is something that you also want to uh, focus on is getting rid of paper. Somebody in the chat box mentioned about your mail and your paper, okay? You have to keep up with paper. It's huge, it's very, very important. And if you don't wanna do it on a daily basis, that's fine. I set aside a Saturday morning where I go through all the stuff that I got every, you know, every day. I make that, I have a pile where all of my mail goes, right? It, that's where it sits in my office. And then on Saturday morning, I go through everything. And how I have it is I sort it, right? One is the stuff to go through and decide what I'm doing with it. The second one is shred and the third one is recycle, right? That's the method that I use that works for me. And I have like slots, you know, one slot to go through, one slot to recycle, and then the other one is to shred. So what I do with the stuff that I, that I need and it's useful, I scan my documents. So that way then I can then shred the paper once I scanned it. Think of scanning your documents and putting them in the virtual filing cabinet, right? If something ever happens to the paper that you have and it gets damaged, you have a copy in your virtual filing cabinet. A couple of suggestions I have is Dropbox and Google Drive. If you have a Gmail account, you have access to Google Drive. It's free. And uh, Dropbox is free as well. You're welcome to use this link and uh, take advantage of it because you can file thousands and thousands of pieces of paper and keep them in your virtual filing cabinet versus a big one that may be sitting in your office. Next, if you are absolutely tired of getting junk email, here's a, pro a tool for you. It's called Unroll Me. You can use that tool to unsubscribe from unwanted emails and re retailers. I do it on a regular basis because people, I don't, and I, sometimes I wonder how did I get added to this list because I didn't subscribe to it. So use that and it's actually, it's very helpful and it's very compact in how they help you do that. So give that a try. Junk mail, this is the website you need to go to to opt out to not get any junk mail. Now, the reality is you're still going to get it, right? However, uh, this website, when I signed up for it, I found my, that my level of junk mail has decreased. So definitely check it out. And if home office is your, one of your favorite spaces, like it is for me, because that's where I'm working with uh, Ada right now, make sure that it's, it's decluttered and it's organized so that way you can be as creative as you can and if that's your favorite space. All right, let's head into garage and basement. A couple of suggestions for you. I want you to also look at your garage and your basement walls and get that space utilized as much as possible. You can actually hang shelves right up your ceiling, right? So look at the picture on the, on the top left. These are heavy duty shelves that you can hang to your ceiling in the garage. Okay, you can even do that in the basement if you want. And you can store those clear totes that perhaps you use uh, you know, once a year. Maybe those are your holiday decorations that you pull out. Maybe it's your skiing equipment, you know, depending on you know, what you do. You need to sort everything that is in your garage in piles, right? And you can also do the same thing, keeping, donating, throwing, and then deciding. And then your zones are going to be for keeping and storing your groups of items separately in different areas of your garage. Also, for sure, use clear plastic totes that are sturdy. It's even more important for your basement and the garage because they are prone to elements. Right? Our garages are not heated 
and our basements, you know, God forbid you get water in there, you want to make sure that your stuff that is in your totes is going to be protected. Use your wall space to hang your brackets and shelves. Here are some of the ideas for you as well. On the right, this is the organizer that I have in my shed for all of my gardening tools that we use in our family because we love to garden. And what I like about it is I can see exactly what's there. I don't have to rummage through the corners of the shed to try and find the tool that I may need today, you know, whether I'm weeding or planting. And also, under the shelves that you're hanging in the garage or your basement, you can actually put hooks on them and you can hang your bikes, you can hang your lawn equipment, trailers, and other stuff that is that way you can pick it up off the floor and that way you have more floor uh, area left. The goal is ultimately for you to keep your cars in your garage because it is the second biggest financial investment after your home ownership, right? So that's why we are working on clearing your floor space so you can put the cars in there. All right, let's talk about papers, okay? This is one of the questions that comes up all the time. So I have a very handy guide for you. The question is, what should you shred and what you should keep, okay? So two things, I know we're in the decluttering class, but I am asking you to buy these two things if you do not have them yet. Number one is an inexpensive shredder. You're going to need that for your paper so that way you don't keep stacks and stacks of paper that you know you need to shred, you just don't know where to do it. Okay, this is the shredder that I personally have that I bought on Amazon as well. It is inexpensive and it's, uh, you know, it, it handles a lot of things. And then you need a regular trash bag. From what I understand, the stuff that you shred, you know, all those little pieces of paper, you can't recycle them. They actually have to be thrown away. So you can put them in the trash bags and then put it out for your next trash. My recommendation is get another tote or a box whatever you feel comfortable with, that is going to be your shred box. And then decide whether you're going to do this once a month or some kind of other time frame. and you take care of that paper, that is your appointment, that is your shredded appointment with yourself, and you're going to take care of those papers. My recommendation is once a month, because I think if you wait longer than that, it's going to be a lot more paper, and then you may get frustrated because, uh, you know, the shredder may not be able to handle all of them, you know, that volume of paper at the same time. If your papers have any kind of, uh, any information with your signatures or any kind of account information or credit card offers, or if you have doubts whether you should shred it or not, my suggestion is go ahead and shred it. This way it'll give you peace of mind that everything gets taken care of, okay? So the next slide, is something that I'm going to encourage you to hang in your office, on the refrigerator, somewhere that you can actually refer to on a regular basis. This is important, okay? How long should I keep certain papers? Okay, so that will answer a lot of your questions. I put this in the easy to understand format. And what I'm, what I'm asking you to keep a special consideration to and look at is your keep forever list at the bottom, okay? That is the most important list. Those are the things that you will keep forever for as long as you live. And those are the things that are your will, your birth and death certificates, your burial arrangements, any kind of transcripts, diplomas, copyrights, any kind of government papers, uh, military veteran records. Here's a whole list for you that I came up with that I, rem I remember clients asking me about. Also, you should be keeping these things either in a safe at home that is fireproof or in a safety deposit box in the bank. You can buy a safe on Amazon, you can buy it at Home Depot or Lowe's. The one I have is small and it was under $100 that I bought from Home Depot and it has to be fireproof. And the reason being is that God forbid something happens to your home, your papers burn down, and now you're in a crisis mode because you need certain things. And then you have to apply you know, the government agency to get those items and it can take forever. And frankly, some items may be irreplaceable. So rather than putting yourself in such a stressful situation, this is what I recommend that you do. Either buy a safe or get a safety deposit box at the bank and that's where you keep those. Uh, those boxes, I believe you rent on a yearly basis from your bank. 
So look into that. Okay, so this is important. I encourage you again to print this out, keep it on your refrigerator, keep it in your office, wherever you are handling things, but keep it handy. All right, let's talk about what we're going to do with all the stuff that we have sorted and organized, okay? Number one, donating and throwing things away, okay? So I am encouraging you to use your trash and recycle days that you have from your township, okay? The goal is that every time you put your trash out, you do regular trash and then some of the trash from your decluttering efforts. So use those days, okay? You are, some townships have bulk days where they will tell you you can bring a bunch of stuff and you can just throw it away in their dumpsters. So check with your township to see if they host these days and when the next ones are. Put them on your calendar and that is your appointment again if that is the route that you want to take. There are 1-800-GOT-JUNKS and Junk King trucks that you have seen probably commercials for and uh, you know them driving around. I can tell you that those trucks are great when you are on a deadline and you need to get rid of stuff because you have to, okay? And the reason being is those trucks are expensive. I believe to fill up the truck that they, that they bring to you is about $700. So think of those trucks as your last resort. If you're really, really on a tight time frame, stressed out, you need to get rid of stuff, they're the good people to call because they do work uh, long hours and they you know they can come to you on a short notice electronic recycling you do know that you cannot throw computers and tvs and put them in the curb anymore the law has been passed i believe for the last three years that those things have to be disposed of in a certain way so one of the best ways i found is best buy you can bring a couple of items to them per day per person some townships collect electronics and our county has electronic recycling days as well. So Google and check and see when the dates are for this year. And again, if you have a lot of electronics as you're going through that you realize that you need to get rid of, you know, like VHS recorders or old TVs, you know, all kind of keyboards, com computers, you need to make a pile of them in your garage or your shed and wait until the next day comes for the county and then donate them that way. Hazard trash days is important as well. Here's a list of the items you can't just throw away. So I want you to be mindful of those of that list as well. Used motor oil, batteries, oil paint, right? Not the water-based paint, but oil paint, insect repellents, specialty light bulbs that we have now. You can't just throw them away. They have to be disposed of a certain way. So if you want to make a pile of those things again in your garage or your shed, and then find out when our county has those uh, hazard recycle days. Uh, they kind of alternate them between electronic and hazard days. That would be a good idea. And then you can get rid of those things that way. Overall, what I have found in my years of working in real estate is that furniture is the hardest to get rid of. I can't tell you how many times you feel like, oh, I'm just gonna sell it because this is beautiful. Unfortunately, what people are looking for now is not the same interest that the same goals of maybe when you bought your own furniture. So I want you to consider that if you have a lot of furniture that you want to get rid of, because it takes the longest, start sooner than later. Like China cabinets are very hard to get rid of. A lot of the times they just have to be thrown away. So uh, this one place that I found, furniturebanks.org, check them out for local locations. They don't have a lot of them. Um, and then, you know, some that's where you may be able to get some tips and resources. Baxter is a great way, think of that as a huge bag that you can actually purchase at Home Depot and Amazon. The bag itself costs money and then you can schedule pickup by waste management, they'll come grab it, okay? So you can fit, if you really try your best, you could fit a lot of stuff, a lot of trash in it. Uh, that's just one of the options for you to get rid of trash as well. But donations, Salvation Army, Goodwill, Good Stuff, thrift stores that we have here are good options. Uh, Purple Heart, Homefront Habitat are great options as well. Um, they take a lot of furniture. You do need to check with them because they will ask you, what furniture do you have? 
And also some of them will not go up to your second floor. If your furniture is on the second floor, they're going to tell you that you need to bring it out and put it on the, on the first floor for them to take that furniture away. I already mentioned to you pet stores and animal shelters for clean clothing, sheets, donations. I think those are great resources. For books, besides local libraries, assisted living homes, uh, like nursing homes, are building libraries for their residents. So check with your local ones to see if you have books and maybe magazines to donate and they will take them. If you have seen those little, uh, little free libraries, they're almost like, like oversized bird houses. I've seen them in a couple different neighborhoods where you can go up and take a book or two and then maybe donate a couple. I thought this was a great way as well to be of value in the community to participate and have fun. Uh, also check with your church. A lot of the times there's projects uh, that are going on and maybe your church is doing some kind of donation drive. Uh, so see what they have. Uh, beauty products, you can actually donate them to a couple of different organizations. Uh, toys and stuffed animals are tough. I can tell you that a lot of the like Salvation Armies and Goodwills may not take them because they're afraid of um, liability that comes with it because of the toys are broken. So you can also check with some local um, daycares. Some of them may take items depending on what they are. And local police departments and organizations, they'll help kids in emotional situations. That's what one of my clients did. She donated them to the police department and uh, they were able to take them, uh, you know, when they have to you know, take care of kids or, you know, while they're waiting for, to, be to be placed in foster care, you know, going through the system and processing. Sometimes it's great to be able to give them some of those toys and, you know, and um, stuffed animals to help them. All right, let's talk about these things. These are our meaningful things that we get passed down to us from family members, you know, things that are important. And I get questions on these all the time. I have a ton of greeting cards or thank you cards that I get from clients all the time, and I really don't want to throw them away. Okay, so here's kind of the rule of thumb after I talk to a couple of people and I ask for their advice. My recommendation is keep a few of the most meaningful ones or better yet, create a frame or a collage. Like I have an example on the right and then you can go ahead and recycle the rest. Keepsakes from loved ones, same thing. Uh, choose a few pieces to display, maybe make some kind of art collage and then take the photos of the larger pieces to keep memories and then donate. And what I want you to think about is when you're donating things that are keepsakes that maybe were passed down to you from, you know, from generation to generation, you are allowing someone else to own something that, that will help them create new memory for them, right? When you're donating something, that doesn't mean you're throwing those things away. Uh, with regards to photos and albums, we all have tons of photos. This is, has been the biggest concern for a lot of uh, people I know. It's time to get them digitized. And here's a couple of suggestions for you. Your local library can scan them for you. You just need to buy um, a USB drive, right? It's a little portable stick that is your, not quite virtual, but your filing cabinet on like a little stick, okay? Costco has services where they will help you digitize photos, convert VHS tapes, right? If you have VHS tapes that have important um, videos of your children when they were younger, definitely have them digitize, digitize it for you and put it on the DVD that you can keep. And then they can also do some older things like reels and photo slides and Betamax items if you have them. There are quite a few apps and services online and I have them listed for you here that you can go on. You can send them all the photos and they will digitize them for you and then return the photos to you. And I think this is also a great way. I want you to think about that if God forbid the pictures get damaged, you still have digital copies. And um, what they do have now is the digital photo frames where you can upload a bunch of the photos that you really love and you will you know, play the photos one after the other. So think of that as your digital album, that way you get to enjoy the photos that you just scanned in. 
my barn burned down and now I can see the moon. Just something to consider that just because you are getting rid of something does not mean it's not the beginning of something new and beautiful, right? So just remind yourself that you're not casting those memories and heirlooms aside. You are actually, what you're doing is creating new breathing room in your life to create new memories, to have new experiences that you can then record and be able to enjoy, okay? DVDs, CDs, VHS, uh, nobody's accepting VHS anymore. You can just go ahead and donate or recycle those items. All right, selling and who can help you. Check out eBay and Etsy. Etsy is more of a creative side and sister to eBay.com. You can order a free clean out bag and you can fill it with women's clothes and send it back. And that's a company called ThreadUp. I'm actually trying them out. I just printed a label from them. You can put, they, they, they send you a prepaid label and you can just fill the box or a bag with your clothes and they give you instructions on what some of the things that they do take. And then you send it to them. They will prep it, they will scan it and they will try and sell it. And then you get a portion of those sales after they take their commission for the work that they did. And if they cannot sell it, then they recycle the clothes for you. So I thought it was a cool idea to try. If you are on social media, definitely check out <coughs> Craigslist. Facebook sale groups are great. Uh, a couple of apps that you can do. Like I, I've done offer up and let go. Very easy to use. You just take pictures. You put a price in the description and it, you know, post to thousands of people that may be shopping. They can search for the items that they may be looking for. If you are a member of Nextdoor, that's also a great way to be able to get rid of some things. Nextdoor is a group that is on social media of your particular neighborhood, like where you live. So see if there's one in, you, in your area. You just go to nextdoor.com and then you give them your address and they'll tell you if there's a neighborhood or not. Most likely there is. Poshmark is a website that sells more higher end products and uh, names and designers. So if you have some of those things, you can give them a try. It is also a consignment service where they will, once they sell your item, then they will send you the check for that item as well. And tried and true methods. You can always have a garage in your sale, right? Where it's not just getting into that season. You can hire an estate sale company. I've had used the services when a family contacted me to sell the whole house, right? The contents of the whole home because somebody passed away. Maybe they went in, into the assisted living facility. Uh, that Those companies are very helpful because they will come in and they are very efficient. They have a system. They will organize everything for you. They will tag everything. They will advertise. They will hold the sale. They will control the crowd and the environment, make sure that nothing gets stolen. And in return, they collect a percentage of the sales as they are as their payment. Uh, that's typically between 30 and 40 percent, just to give you an idea. You can also have the same style sale, but online, where you photograph everything, everything gets posted online. The sale happens online, and then there is a designated date and time window where people and those buyers can come in and pick up their stuff. So who can help you? This is important and it's tough for some people. So that's why I added that information here. If you have family and friends who can help you, that's great. Do ask them. I found personal organizers are a big help for some of us who maybe need assistance or older. And for large volumes, of course, you can utilize an estate sale company. All right, your action plan. This is where you're going to grab your notebook that I mentioned to you in the beginning. And I'm going to ask you to jot down your thoughts, right? So start with these questions. Why is it whatever you want to declutter is bothering you in the first place? Okay, what are your concerns, right? Why do you want to declutter? Who you can ask for help if you need help? Do you need to hire an organizer maybe to help you sort items, maybe to figure out what can be donated, what can be sold, okay? Also, when do you want to be done and why? It may be hard 
question to answer, right? If you have a full basement to go through or a full attic, but just give, an, give yourself an idea. You know, if you're doing decluttering because you may be planning a move in the near future, then your move and your target date, maybe where you want to be in a new location, may be your time frame to kind of focus on, okay? I also recommend using a painter's blue tape. Uh, you can buy it in Home Depot or Lowe's. It is in the section where all your painting supplies are. What I like about it is that you can easily peel it off, you can easily write on it, and it's a great way for you to mark the items that you are either keeping or you're going to get rid of, okay? The good thing is, is if you change your mind, you can just peel it off, right, and then you, you change your mind. But it's a great way for you to visually mark the items in the room that you're working in. This is what I'm keeping, and this is what I'm not keeping. Then, once you kind of figure out what you want to do, where you want to get started, what is your favorite room in the home, if you want to use my suggestion, then you need to set a date and time on when you're going to get started, okay? If you want to get started this Saturday morning and use my suggestions, I welcome you to do that. If that date does not work for you, pick something else and put it in your calendar as an appointment with yourself, so that way you're going to respect that time when you're going to get started. Then I'm encouraging you to use this handy room by room guide that we went over today that I hope is helpful to you to kind of give yourself an idea on depending where you're starting, use the guide for that room to help you and guide you through this process, okay? I know that you've got this because how do you eat an elephant? One small bite at a time. So that's what, how we're going to declutter our home, our life, or whatever it is that you're planning on doing. So here's what's next. I want to thank you for jumping in today. If you are looking for recommendations for contractors or companies that can help you with the sorting, decluttering, and selling, if you have antiques and you want to get them appraised, we have some recommendations for you, okay? What I also offering is virtual home unbeating consultations. I'm happy to chat with you to see what you have going on and how we can help you. Of course, because I am a real estate agent, I'm always happy to provide you with a complimentary report on the value of your home as well as your neighborhood, okay? Anything else, if you wanna speak in private with me, I'm always around as well. And um, uh, we have the schedule of the upcoming workshops. Here's the schedule for you. And I am on Facebook. That is my main social media. So I encourage you to you know, friend me, say hello and stay in touch with me. So this is what I have for you today. I hope that you found this interesting. And now we have some time to go over and if you have questions. So I see there are some questions in the chat box. If you want to unmute yourselves and, and let me know. All right, so question from Beverly. Is there a group that takes used textbooks in good condition? I haven't found any. And what I know is that the textbook publishers make it their priority, I think, to publish new versions every year. So that your, your version, like the year of your textbooks, may not be as valuable or as needed. But you can try and Google and see if there's any locations, but I haven't, I haven't found any. Not having the time to put papers from the elementary school, so I may not run away. So we ran up to him. Uh, Chrissy said about having kids not putting stuff, things away after you, they're being used and everything. I have, I think that I.